You'll do it right to celebrate July 4th by throwing a backyard barbecue. Lowe's does it right, too, with July 4th savings to help get you started. Treat yourself to a new grill and save $50 on a Charbroil Performance 5-Burner Grill, now just $279. And spruce up your landscape before guests arrive and save in-store only with five bags of premium mulch for just $10. Whatever you need to get ready for the holiday, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through 710 while supplies last U.S. only. Mulch offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii. At Farmers Insurance, we know a roof can withstand a lot. One exception being an airborne car. Seen it, covered it. Click for more. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers Truck Fire Insurance Exchanges and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. Hi there, this is Jim the Keys, the bartender. That's all right, Jenna. Keep on talking. There's keep no reason. Talking. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Coming to you for episode 80, 183. 183. Uh, uh, Keys, we'll call it Keys Employees, this one. Keys Employees at this Yeah, point. it's like Keys Critters almost, but a little different take. But, you know, <laughs> we did careful on the light on the bitching session. Whether, right, yeah, right. Or not, not, um, not at but all. But I, I have a correction to make, and no one picked it up. Um, they will pick it up when the episode 180s dropped. And I was making a, a comparison between... People not surfing in the Keys, and I picked the wrong movie. Oh. It wasn't Deer Hunter. It was Apocalypse Now, and I'm saying it. I'm listening to the show. I'm listening to a quarter. We didn't even drop it yet. As of today, it didn't even drop, but I put in the show notes. They, The new production company, uh, 43 Keys, they did a wonderful job. They write massive uh, descriptions of the shows, 200 words or more. Oh, cool. Um, uh, well, maybe a little less than that, but it's it's a paragraph or a paragraph and a half. Of, of descriptions. So that means that and, they actually listen happened? to us instead of they just listen to it and dissect sound? it. And then I realized I was listening to it and I go, holy shit, if I listen to it, I think in the second show, even though they may get funnier, you can definitely see that here the brain damage come out. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about uh, how Robert Duvall said in Apocalypse Now, uh, Charlie Don't Surf. And it was uh, it was Apocalypse Now. It wasn't Deer Hunter. Deer Hunter was uh, uh, Robert De Niro. Oh. Uh, and it wasn't it I wasn't as uh, wouldn't have known the difference. Even though I, you wouldn't know. Yeah, I know. And a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't. A lot of people know. But I know a couple people that listen to the podcast, and they just be all look at each other. And go, Deer Hunter. Now there'll be guys, a bunch of guys in um, Philadelphia who listen to the show, just looking at each other and go. You fucked up, Jim. I know. I got it. I got it. Yeah. I put it in the show notes. Yeah. When, as soon as the show, I'm telling you, as, sho- as soon as episode 180, and we're on 180, 183 gets released, 180 gets released, which should be tonight or tomorrow, maybe. Okay. Um, it'll be, it's in the show notes. There won't be any new edit. Um, and I hope, I apologize to my partners at uh, 43 uh, Keys Media. Now, I just went in there and put a, uh, I put in, we, Jim gets confused between the deer hunter and apocalypse. Now, I know it was something else, too. It was with the, um, uh, whenever we're talking about Cialis or uh, whatever word I used was, I, was definitely incorrect. What words was that? No, on the mail and hat. Oh, episode. you're, yes, the mail and hat. You know what? I was wrong. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny when you get something, not just, you, you, there's sometimes you just don't know, and yeah, I, I'll speak. Some, I'll speak before. I'll just I'll, I speculate. I have uh, unlimited you just knowledge. Saying, I'm guessing on this. I'm going to guess. No, I don't say that. <laughs> I just go. I spoke with authority. I spoke with. I speak with authority on things that I know not sometimes, and then I'll call it out and say, "Oh, I thought I knew that, and then I didn't know that. Oh, crap. I didn't know." Uh, I'll say this. This is going to be a big one. I never said this then. Um, a Manhattan. A Manhattan. Oh, no, beverage. no fashion. What did I say? Manhattan thing. Oh, I shook him. You You're not supposed him. to shake him. You're not supposed to shake a Manhattan? Nope. You stir him or you do, uh, yeah, you do pretty much a, sh- uh, a stir oh. or a back, uh, maybe one, w- once and back. But it bruises the liquor. It bruises the liquor? I know. That's what people say and stuff like that. It's not like a martini. You're not supposed to shake it. <laughs> You're not supposed to shake it. And you definitely don't do that through a... Um, an old fashioned. So, what kind an of liquor is kind of it that's in a whiskey, Manhattan that whiskey. bruises? So, whiskey bruises. Whiskey, good. Uh, yeah, I think. Or what's it an old fashioned? Now, I never put out there. I speculated once again 
on the show, the Keys Bartender Show. I happen to be a bartender in the Keys. <laughs> I didn't say I was a great bartender in the Keys. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're reading into that, uh, let me this is just dispel, how you make your let drink. me dispel those uh, any anything implied. I did not imply that I'm a great bartender. All that I am is a bartender in the Keys. Right. And putting the in front of it just means it's the the Keys Bartender podcast. Right. You're not Not the... the, Without the podcast, I can't put... Well, I can... Now I'm the Keys Bartender, not the best number one Keys Bartender. (laughs) I'm not saying I'm the 100th Keys Bartender, but I am a Keys Bartender. You are a Keys Bartender. I I definitely am a Keys (laughs) Bartender. We we might have to change our name to a Keys Bartender. A Keys Bartender. (laughs) Instead of that. No, no, it's not an A Keys bartender show. <laughs> now, if there one that comes up, another show comes up, and they go another Keys bartender show, I'm going, well, fuck no, <laughs> no, you're going to have to make up your own title and stuff like that. Right. So it's not not that. Well, I, I am the first one. You I are. mean, there's other ones. They probably did five, ten podcasts. I was stupid. I have to listen. If I listen to episode 180 too many times, and some of the shit I said. I would have, it wouldn't have made it past 20 podcasts. Uh, it wouldn't. It seriously? wouldn't really wouldn't. It wouldn't have, no. Oh my goodness. Well, we're doing good then. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't like listening. I heard people, heard that about certain people. I'm not considering myself talented or anything like that. I just heard stories of people not liking to listen to anything they do or create the, and, um, it's either, it's really not that good or I'm brilliant. And after some of the mistakes I made in episode eight, listen to myself talk, I would have to be the, I'll be a genius on the short bus. <laughs> How's that? As long as you're not I, licking the windows, Jim. I'm, I'm, oh I'm a genius on the short bus. I'm not a genius among geniuses. <laughs> so, and um, I, I, I'm not calling those people. From, I always said I'd rather be like a really high achieving uh, moderate to low IQ than to a, a low achieving high IQ. Yeah, well, right, well you'd want to be the best of the worst, not the worst of the best. Yes. Right. Yeah, the cream of the sewer. <laughs> right? That's it. I heard that cream of, cream of the sewer. So um, I had, um, so I think we cleared that up, uh, the one thing. And then I want to talk about the next thing is I got two phone calls today. And you know, I told you about that show, Chernobyl. 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 Okay. It's about the meltdown of a nuclear reactor. Right. And it was a five-part series on um, HBO. And I was, I, I love that show. And we talked to my friends about it and stuff like that. And it just wrapped up this past week, the fifth episode. And it was excellent. It was an excellent show. And um, I'm going to listen to it. And we, we just, uh, we talk about how, oh, I knew, I knew, I knew because I had a limited training on how nuclear power works when I was in college especially taking the naval science courses and things like that, yep. how a reactor fundamentally works, not how it essentially works down in the crease, about how reactivity causes a, the, the reaction in, in, in the heavy metals they use. Uh, reactivity has a heat. A heat. A heat right. And that's uh, why they have to be cooled, right? Well, they use that to generate steam okay. to move turbines. It's actually the... the um, the nuclear power is the fuel to raise the temperature of the, the steam. And the steam is the vehicle of turning the turbines right. okay, yeah. that Instead generate the, the power. And that's in it. Yeah. That they put like on rivers. No, or, like or the, it's a steam turbine, just okay. like they would do use on uh, the steam pistons on the Titanic. Right. It's an old, in, it's a relatively old, te- relatively old technology that's been around since um, the, the, the steam generation part right. is relatively old. Uh, the new one is the n- using nuclear power and being able to um, control the reaction is what do you use to control the reaction? I'm asking you. What, if it what, starts, the reaction starts getting hot, what do you call then, it? Then you cool it. How, you no, cool well, not cool it. You don't cool the water. You cool the reactor. Cooling water is don't not. you cool the reactor chambers? You, you, the cooling towers are for cooling the water and stuff like that. Right. But how do you reduce the reaction? Oh, it's something, gosh, you, there's something in it that controls the reaction, and they're called the control, control reactor rods, control, control rods. rods. Oh, control okay. rods go drive, and they, so that limits the exposure. Yeah, they're graphite thing, and it, it reduces it reduces it. And what happened? Uh, they went to a very in in depth for lay people description of how nuclear 
reactor works and how the thing went wrong with Chernobyl. And the one thing was that the, the graphite is when you drop the graphite rods and stuff, it's supposed to, you know, you, the, the more you put in, the more the more you put the control rods in full in, the, the you slow down the reaction or reduce the reaction. Well, what happens at the beginning in Chernobyl when it started heating up? And started going really out of control. When they dropped the reactor, the tip of the uh, of the control rods was a different metal or different uh, uh, material than the rest of it. So the different material at the tip of the control rod increased exponentially the reaction. So when they started to drop them in, as it was shooting up anyway, it it increased the out of control reaction even more and that caused and the that explosion, caused explosion that caused that thing and blew up all that graphite right. thing and, but the, and all that the, stuff. But okay, no listen to it. That's a, we're not we're not one of the shows that have to review that. Right, but this that, is gonna set up the phone calls I got today. Okay, so it's uranium though, isn't it? Uranium that they use not in, well they use for the well, reaction. Right, the reaction Yeah, two thirty five or something like that. Okay. So I and, and they you know, what whatever. So what happens I'm listening to all this, and I'm kind of, oh, well, I'm not an expert. No one's, I mean, you got to be a nuclear physicist and stuff. The people that work at Turkey Point and stuff like that, right. there's technical people, and there's the scientists. Right. Now, technical people know that this is the amount, the, the, you know, the how radiation occurs, how the reaction occurs, how you cool it, how you slow down the reaction, how you increase the reaction, how much you need, and, and a reactor can go full tilt, and generally, a lot of steam, you just have a lot of water, and you got to replace it, and you got to re- reduce the, the cooling towers for reducing the thing. Okay, that's neither here nor there and the stuff. And I, I'm sure if my listeners, if you've listened to it, it was a great show, and it was scary as hell how close they got to um, ruining all, uh, a whole region of the world uh, with that uh, fiasco. But today, I get two phone calls. <laughs> two phone calls. Okay, and it's, uh, listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Okay. Um, but it's a 202 number, and it's Washington, D.C. And it, what do you do? Uh, this is what I do. If I show a number and it called twice, and I'm thinking, oh, who is this? 202. And it called up on my Keys bartender number. Oh. Now my regular number. Showed up on a Keys bartender number. So they weren't looking for me. They weren't looking for Jim Horan, because right. they would have called Jim Horan. Yeah. And it turned out 202, the number was from a government agency. And what it was from a small agency within a larger government agency, it was from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So did you Google the number? No, I Googled out? the number, and the number was to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and exactly it was to the Office of Management of Depleted Uranium Nuclear Material, or nuclear, yeah, or nuclear energy, something like that, one of those names. And, and it came, and it called, they called twice. They call twice, and I'm, I'm, it's either there's someone there who um, – it, either it, the long shot, the lottery winner, is, oh, they want to talk to me. Right. Uh, the sure thing is um, – the mo- thing in the middle is they made a mistake, and they still called it back twice. Because I have a message. This is Jim the Keys bartender. Please leave a name, right. number, and something like that. And it was the Bureau of, <laughs> of yeah, use. yeah, yeah. It's oh control rods and all that stuff. They use they they get rid of the nuclear material. They use the fuel and they uh, Yucca Flats. I think it is in Utah or oh something like that. Gosh. Yeah, uh, where they do. But the NRC is a vast agency. It controls the Nuclear Regulatory Commission controls the, uh, uh, the national one, controls all atomic energy and fuel in the United States, right? And I got two phone calls from them, and I called them back without checking the number. I called back and left a, I left a message. This Jim, host of the Keys Bartender Podcast. I don't know if you were trying to reach me or not. And it went like that. <laughs> I left a message there. I didn't have any person's name. I'm not going to say the person's name. I'm not going to say the phone number. I'm hoping there's a bunch of people in there. But I know the guy's name now because he showed up on there. Oh, my god! And they go, wow, that's weird. If you just put a phone number in, it shows up a guy from an agency that controls um, the stuff that's used. is definitely a, an ingredient you can use in a... Uh, some kind of terrorist wep- oh weapon, the leftover stuff. You know what I mean? It's yeah. very re- radioactive. Now, this. Now, what do you think the scariest thing that went to my mind after hearing that? I just saw Chernobyl and all that stuff, right. and they tried to hide it and all that stuff about the dangers of 
you know, the, the way the nuclear reactors were, it, there was a design flaw in the nuclear reactors. Okay. And, and I'm going to, and this just ended Sunday and these calls happened on Tuesday. This happened. The last show was on Sunday. I saw it on Monday. I saw it on Monday. I saw the show on Monday. Okay. Because I worked Sunday night. And so it was only one day later and it's fresh in my mind. Abby didn't get the, um, what do you call that? The synchronicity or the, um, uh, uh, the weird chance of that occurring. Right. That someone from the NRC, and that's what it is. It's not, I'm not making it up. It's just, I put the phone right. number in and the phone number came up at, at, after you go into this thing where they show first, if you want to know that who the person is calling from that. Yeah. And then you go later on, it's showing all this stuff for re- re- Nuclear Regulatory <laughs> Commission. And then it shows this and I go, holy shit. And it's uh, it's that address, and it's the website they should give it uh, an email address. Like, what are the someone. chances? What are the chances? What are the chances? Well, what's the thing that scared me most? Like, I, you know what? I didn't think they were trying to call me to shut me up. And I really hope, I hope they weren't trying to call Turkey Point and got the wrong number and called back twice. Trying to call someone from Turkey Point. Uh, what really scares me is there's a fan of the show that listens from there. Oh. To the podcast. Okay. And uh, they're in charge. Someone who listens to the show is in charge of disposing of nuclear material. <laughs> and that's, that's, it's funny. Isn't that weird? That's, that's... I just insulted some of our listeners, didn't I? Wow. Didn't I do that? But I, you know what? I'm staying real. I call myself, like, didn't I call myself yeah, many, yeah. manly, pretty much call myself manly handicap recently and stuff like that. Yeah. I am, I am self-aware of being disintelligent. But I'm not in Kafool thinking I'm a super genius. Right. I know that guy on Jeopardy that one he just lost last oh, week. Yeah. Right? Everybody's I realize I I'm that. not you know what? I could win maybe with the right questions and without having crazy people, well, crazy genius on it. I can win one of those shows one time on the right show with the right questions. Yes, right, I'm yeah. pegging pick it up. But the, but the general are the knowledge of everything? No. Genre that no, you are no. interested in then, yeah. No, I know I know I have a wide range of, of things I I have no I have a shallow depth in sports and th- stuff like that. Heavy depth in history, history and stuff like that, but I'm not across the board in pop culture even. I mean, I know enough that I do I can do well in a trivia at night right. and stuff like that. So, but still, where mine is from a win. I'm still shocked by that. This is crazy. oh, it is weird. It was fu- it was fucking weird. And I told Abby, and Abby goes, "Well, that's not weird. I told you about my dream." I said, "That's a dream. Everyone has dreams. You have a during the night. You can have a hundred dreams. You know that? Oh, that just like it's just like because your whole system set down, and they go for they seem much longer. You know uh, that, and you know what? Your voice will be practically picked up from there. You know that? Okay. Your voice." Well, from yeah. Well, no, it is actually it isn't picking up anything from over here. So that was an interesting way to spend the first 18 minutes of the show. Um, yeah. And I thought about that, that weirdness. It happened after I dropped my daughter off at, and this will segue really nice into, we're actually going to stay in line. Keys employees. And what? Stuff like that. I dropped her off at you the movie theater. You never stay in line. Okay, oh, go ahead. Right there. I told it. I talked uh, about uh, the two uh, things because we started talking about in this episode 180 about the idea I started about all the uh, uh, climbing permits they gave. And I didn't talk about all the people that had fucking died. Right, yeah. For uh, Yeah, uh, I don't know. At, at that Mount point in time, it was like 14 maybe. Everest. Mount Everest. 14 people died. But I never went back to that. Right. I started talking about it, and we just blew through all these things. And I'm going to get back to it because I still have that written down. Ooh. So, uh, uh, Sky, my daughter's off of summer and stuff like that. We're, she's not in camp yet because she was not feeling well. And uh, we're in the Keys, and, um, you know, there's a lot of things to do down here. There's a lot of summer camps. There's sailing camp. There's tennis camp. Well, this guy's sick. She can't do anything. The doctor said. This guy's an athlete. So her friend calls out wants to go to movies. I go to movies, uh, drop her off, uh, and it leads into this thing the day before. This is where we're at the movies, and I recall a conversation I had with this a fellow acquaintance of ours, Joe. Okay. And he said, and... We don't have to go into any other, anything other than that. He says it's very hard to find employees down here. Now, I have my theory on it, Key's employees. Because as we were going in there, 
We're at the movie theater, and I'm looking at the guys behind the counter, and they're pretty much some of a middle age. There's a middle aged guy. Uh, God, he must be in his mid to late thirties, working a counter at a movie theater in Tavernier, Florida. And the guy next to him is probably in his twenties. And they're, you know, they they're gaming. I know they probably have a gaming chair at home and shit like that. Right. And I'm not gonna. I'm not making fun of them or anything. No. That that's just the way they are, and that's where they are. And they're discussing the superhero thing, and I'm kind of geeking out. I like some of those superhero movies too. Uh-huh. So I wanted to join in and go, "Yeah, this was that fucking great." What do you think about the next Marvel comic? So I'm sitting there looking at. it. I said, "Well, these guys, this is, has to be one of the lowest paying jobs in the Keys." Oh, I would think so. The, uh, one what's of the, the lower minimum wage here now, Shannon. Shannon, my service manager is over here. Yeah, Shannon, what's, what's the minimum wage now? Eight, eight, you have five. hourly employees. Eight, is it eight seventy five? Eight twenty five? Eight seventy five? So oh, we have Shannon, the the, uh, the uh, service manager. Yes, from uh, Riva. Riva. Yep. Uh, he just said eight seventy five an hour. So, but I think these guys maybe they get a quarter, a quarter, you know, a quarter raise every quarter, maybe or every. Oh gosh, probably five cents. You think that's it? You know, th- holy I, shit! I, I oh my god! It. If someone gave me a nickel raise. I'd kick him in the ding ding. I would drive that through their eyeball. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I would take that nickels. nickel and drive it through their eye. <laughs> oh, there we go. Bear, bear or beer. I brought a 12. You, you brought a 12? Oh, good. I, d- I did. I actually See? did. <laughs> Look at that. I actually did um, go to the gas station and get beer. And I set it on the scooter, like you said, and there still was room for my feet. But okay, let's get back there to were, this. There were ahead. tourists oh. that took pictures of me. Oh, they were taking pictures of you? Yes, and I was embarrassed. Shit, I'm going to, you know, eventually I'm going to kick the power off you. They were, they were, they what? were um, in a Mustang convertible, which no, nobody down here owns. Yeah, well, today and, when I drove Sky down to Tavernier, I saw four or five Mustang convertibles. Yeah. And in the back seat, because in the luggage. convertible, all their luggage, right? right? They're driving down. Yeah. So it seems like you probably, with all the, I mean, it's 90 degrees outside. Yeah. You got a convertible. It's horrible in hot weather. Well, of course, because like those of us that deal with this hot weather, like, you That'd know, be great up in Michigan. Time. Right now? Yeah. In Michigan, I bet you could get a pretty good deal driving. But, uh, if you yeah. want to say, I want to rent it. What are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to drive up to Michigan. Give you unlimited miles. You go, sure, leave sure. it up there. Yeah. And then when someone's up in Michigan and, they, and it's October and they go, I'm um, going to drive down to Keys with the convertible. Go ahead. There you go. Oh, Give right. them a great deal. Yeah. Get your ass down. Yeah, so I didn't but, mean to segue with you employees. sideways on that. So no, we we're, on a, we're on the employee thing. Okay. That's much like that. that's part of it. So, but the philosophy of it, we've had to talk. We spoke about this so often. We're in this, the demographics of the Keys, 120 miles long if you go From Ocean Reef. Yeah. Or, Ocean yeah, Reef. well, you call it the, the occupied part from right. the, the northern tip of Ocean Reef down to uh, about, well, no, 106, what? about 15, 60 miles, what about 121. Shannon, 120. what is the northern point of Ocean Reef? What would that mile marker Ocean, be? Uh, mile marker 121. Is it that far? Yeah. Is it point? Yeah, okay. He can no, He's miles. just afraid to get on the radio. 120 miles, some, place, some of the places uh, as narrow as uh, uh, you know, like 50 yards across. The, where there are keys. Yes. And not all of them populated. Nope. And, uh, and then you have your fishermen, you have your retirees, you have your wealthy, you, you have your contractors and stuff like that. But because of the, um, let's say, the cost of living down here, where we're going to say, and we had this discussion before. Yes. In Key West, a 1-1, one, one, I've seen one for about, Two thousand. That would be a good price. Two thousand a month, maybe eighteen hundred a month, with utilities, maybe two thousand a month for a one-one small studio in Key West. Yeah. Am I being out of control on that? No, no. I it's think unlike, it's close. and it, it, it's almost like it's it's definitely San Francisco on up there with San Francisco and Manhattan. Them being a little higher, but then again, they make more money up there than we do. Right. You make a shitload more money in Manhattan than you would in the Keys. I think now you I have people know here. What their minimum yeah, because I think it's much higher. But, than but people that are looking for, let's say, the job pays. Um, he pays people fifteen dollars an hour. Okay. That's six hundred a week. Yep. Thirty thousand a year. Mm. Rent, utilities, and they. Let's say in Upper Keys, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred, taxes. 
he's going to eat up at least 15% of that. That's sales taxes, income tax. Yes, you get some of the money back and stuff like that with your claimer. And then you have your, just your general cost of living, food. If you go out, if you go out once a week. If your car insurance. For, for what if you have a car, car insurance, payment? Car insurance. Players. Well, right. uh, normally you don't see someone with a $15 an hour job driving a brand new car. Or that car is going to be repoed eventually. Uh, that's a poor choice. If well, you make a new car decision when you're making $15 an hour, you should be driving a, driving a beater. The time you start thinking about new cars when you make it 25 bucks an hour down here. <laughs> it really is. Well, it depends on the situation. but the um, Oh, yeah. If you don't have to pay rent and stuff like that. Yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. 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 But I will tell you that my, my sons rented a house together. They yeah. worked together. They worked as a team. They were a two-income family. Yes. They're twins. And, and, and that's almost still, like one super person. Still could not afford yep. to pay their utilities. Yep. So I did. Two people. Yes. You know, um, And brothers, we, like we, twin brothers um, in the same house. I was able to do this and not work 50 hours like a week because of I have a really great landlord. I don't own a, I don't own a property. You don't own a house, yeah. No, I don't. And uh, I, I, everyone has a certain beliefs. If I did have one, it would definitely be a place with a higher ground. That's the way I feel. I, I just got to think like 20 years from now where I'm, what I want to do with it and where it's going to be. Right now, if you, you could flip a house right now in the next couple of years, you can. They're selling. Someone, I just, someone, someone sold a piece of shit right on, uh, up on, uh, on the way to Ocean Reef. Not in Ocean Reef. One of those side streets that's kind of like a dumpy area. Yeah, yeah. 375,000. Yeah. Mosquito infested. They don't go up. It's so underpopulated. They don't really do anything about the mosquitoes. No. If you don't have people living there, those planes don't come up there. But get us back to the um, employee. So you got the people. There's a certain type of people that will work for $15 an hour. Yeah. And there's other people that say, well, I'm going to go for $20 an hour or $25 an hour or 30 or 40 some of these nice restaurants and bars, you can make, you can pretty much do, you could do 40 an hour, 40, 50 an hour. Right. And, but they usually, the, in the service industry, you have uh, different kind of lifestyles and they blow through. Uh, they, they hold on to maybe, if they make 40 an hour, they're holding on to like 15 or, you know, at most. Right. And they're pissing away that money like crazy. Well, when they're younger, they do. Yeah. They service people. And then you have um, you have how they get firemen and, and, and police officers. I mean, if they're not making fifty grand a year, they're not. Monroe County sheriffs. I don't know how you feel about them personally. I think they do a great job for what they get paid down here and how they have to live. Well, it, it, and honestly, like fifty grand a year, you you can't live anywhere nice no. here for fifty. You're grand in a trailer. A yep, you're in a trailer. And it's Living in a decent place, you got to have a combined income of like between uh, 70, about 70. Ah, yeah. 70. 70. When you start getting 70 and then 90. Then you can rent And over 100. Something. 100, uh, over 100. Combined of 100, 120. There's, you can do it. But building wealth is slow down here. And if you want to live on the water, that's not Well, if you're building on the water, you got to make 150 grand a year. Yep. Because you're going to be spending, if you're renting, you're going to be spending. Upwards of thirty-five to fifty thousand for uh, anything under three, a three-two and under, and you could spend up to eighty thousand for like a really nice, like right. five-four something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, easy a hundred thousand, nine thousand. Uh, over, I think she pays three or three thirty-five hundred dollars a month in rent for on the on the rent. water on the water on the water. How big? Uh, I think it's a three-two. Three two, yep. But thirty. That's about right. That's actually a pretty good deal. In 30, rent. Yeah, that's that's but it. That's still ridiculous. No, that's but that's more than it. my mortgage. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's thirty five. I believe she pays thirty five with uh, utilities, and then utilities are separate. So that's maybe you know another six hundred dollars. Do you think it's two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars? If it's an uh, older home, and depending on how the cooling system is set up. I mean, you're going to have two to four hundred dollars a month just in just in electric. She's fifty thousand. That's fifty thousand a year. It's ridiculous. That's fifty thousand a year right. for your your total. So that's gone. Yeah, and I don't believe that that associate of mine actually makes even close to that much money a year. I believe well, that her partner. fiance 
yeah, yeah. is the one who ends up having to front most of that. Oh, what, what does he do? Uh, oh, what, don't mention it. No, yeah. But no. what range would he do? What is, is he um, way above 50, I 60? I think he's probably in like the... Like 70s? You know, it's hard to guess. I, I really don't know. I guess I would probably say... Seeing what, like, what I know that he drives and what his payment on his vehicle probably is and, like, things like that, I'm, I'm going to guess that he's probably at least in the 85 range or he wouldn't be able to afford it. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. And it does. It is. It will drain your wealth, yes. your ability to acquire wealth. And having that you kind of money, Central it. Florida or Redlands, if that kind of money in the Redlands, Central Florida, Sarasota area, Northern Florida, forget about when you get to Mississippi and Alabama. That money is six five house with uh, the Forrest Gump big house with right. the big porch yeah. and uh, just, ten acres. I just you know? experienced that yesterday. I went actually on Sunday. We what? drove up the west coast of Florida. We went all the way to Crystal River, yeah. and then yesterday we came all the way home and just. Your mic is not lit up at I'm all. I'm not light it lit up. Now it is. Okay. It wasn't. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, there we go. We'll see. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we went all the way up to Crystal River. Yeah. And then, um, which is like you know quite a ways up there, and then yeah. all the way back down. But um, and you can see the values. You know the values of the properties and everything else were just insane. I mean, you can you can purchase a private island with a five four with multiple outbuildings and everything else. Oh. On, uh, in Crystal River. I think we established, though, what, how... Right. That, that Crystal River, what do you say, how much? 500000 Okay, but... but Which... But what you're... Is four You know, points. the person, whatever they're doing, sometimes the, the, the incomes are scaled. Like, if you're up there, let's say you're working for that company. I was talking about was paying fifteen. Right. You'd be making 9 to $10 an hour. Right. So, therefore, I mean, but let's say that you decide, okay, because, like, here... You know, if my house, my house is worth well over five, but yet if I went up there and bought a private island with 4.6 acres and a bunch of money down, I'd have a smaller mortgage than I have now. Yeah. But yet the area, it's, it's relative. It's relative well, to your income because I wouldn't make the same we're, amount we're, of um, money I'm, that I make here. So, I would make a lot so, less So there. what I was trying to establish is what you need to do in order to... F- Afford the things like obviously, if you could live on a small, like a tiny two one with someone Some. that da- up here, and it could cost, let's say, you could get away with like fifteen hundred a month with your utilities. You get two one, and it's two people. You get away. You're at the end of the thing. You maybe paying. You're you're paying around with your utilities eight hundred a month. Eight hundred a month. You uh, you need to make, for, and then you have your phone bills and everything else right. that you need. You need to make around thirty five hundred. So minimum wage uh, at nine bucks to ten bucks. I think they have to. The only way you can get away starting someone down here is maybe ten, eleven dollars. I think it's got to be ten dollars. There's no nobody's going to. Uh, no legal person is going to take a job for uh, eight seventy five down here. I think that our our starting wage, I believe, for the very entry level position that you could possibly get at the lowest scale at our company, I believe, is at nine. I believe we start them at nine dollars an hour, right? Sh- Shannon shit. agrees. I believe it's nine. You're living in the shed. Well, or with their parents, yeah. because that would be for like a very young person. Yes, and sometimes it's very seasonal. You know, hey, I'm not saying I'm in the, in the I'm in the service industry. I'm not looking down on people. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for in the keys, and people are surprised the kind of things and the stories you hear about because of that. Um, you have good employees down here, really good people down here. There are great employees there down there. Are some there really are down ones, here, but, but they're spread out. There's so many businesses that. They will, they, if I, people cherry pick, they say, what did, they meet someone, let's say they meet a waiter and they're on the ball and they say, well, I have a fuel business. I can teach you how to do the stuff in the office. You seem to, you all, you're always there. You're always squared away. You always seem sharp and all this stuff. Why don't you come and I'll teach you that. They, they are more, people are more likely to take people without experience, apprenticeships down here. I have a guy, guy, one of the guy, the traveling mechanic guys, the guy who's with him. Oh, my God. I thought he was, 
What's a nice way of calling that? You know. Slow? He was a bit slow. Okay. His language was slow. He looked like, I mean, he looked like it was a challenge every day for this guy. But I don't know if it was a physical thing or like just because he smoked a little too much weed and drinks too much <laughs> and stuff like that. You never know down you know, here. What I've some noticed people. though is that there are there 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 are like a needle in a haystack to get really good employees, which I found. Well, because you have this such as a, a small population, right? And just uh, such a high cost of living. But if, and we had that fine line tether right. of trying to coax someone. We got uh, millions of people within forty miles north of us. So a million people. Let's say forty miles yeah. north. Yeah. A million people up there. Maybe 45. Let's creep up there and get all of that lower South Florida uh, part into Miami. But to coax them down, the only way to coax someone down is, uh, I think, if you had to make, you'd have to make like $25,000 more a year Well, in order to justify spending upwards of three hours a day uh, going back and forth. What I've noticed is, that, you know, I... Like you know, have a hand in running one of the biggest businesses in the Upper Keys. Yes. And what I've noticed is that when we do find the really good ones, we get lax on taking care of them. And if we don't pay them right, and if we don't take care of them, and we don't give them enough time off and give them enough benefits and be respectful to them and say thank you and please, and and we know we're working you to death, we know this. But we have to make but, it but, right, and we have to pay them enough be, so they stay. Yeah, Otherwise, besides, they leave. No, but besides that, like that type of business, and there's sales, other sales businesses, other boat sales places. There's no more car sales places up there. It used to be Key Largo, huh? You no more know. car sales till you get down to maybe there. Marathon and Key West. Has In a Marathon, they believe they have a used. They have used cars, too. but there's a, no new cars. I don't believe until you get to Key West, right? Key West? Shannon okay. is gr- agreeing again. Okay, and th- and down here, I would I could name the um, Aqueduct Authority. Yes, I could name the co-op, the yeah, electrical, electrical co-op. co-op they FDC. are very big at nurturing people and uh, a chain and one big chain. You know the big chain I'm going to talk about, right? It's a trade winds. Okay, yes. Publix. Yes, Publix. Publix nurtures employees and stuff like that. They do? There's another one from my neck of the woods. They're not, they haven't made their way down here, but they will conquer the entire Keys when they make it down here. And I mentioned it. It's just two. It's four letters repeated. No, two letters repeated. W-A, W-A. I Wawa. just learned what that was. Yeah. They just was opened, they opened a bunch of them up in Miami within a month up there. And they're from my neck of the woods, they're Wawa, Pennsylvania, but they just spread out. And the reason Isn't why really they that's did... that's what it's... The city was called Wawa? Wawa, Pennsylvania, So that's why yeah. it's called Wawa. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's from Wawa, Pennsylvania. It was a dairy So it's area. a gas station. It's like they are all it gas was. stations. It started out as a dairy. It was a dairy, and they built their own store. And what they did, like many successful businesses... They created an incentive program for their employees, and it's reinvestment where you give them ownership oh, right. of that. And that is like they kept them. You, know, you have someone that works. They go there to work as a cashier, and that's just viable. If you descend to, decide to stay 20 years at a Wawa and you take night courses and stuff like that, you can end up being a regional manager, end up having like a million dollars in stock. There's and a, like there's and a when chain growing, like that in Minnesota, too. Like my, uh, I have a friend that worked for a place called like Holiday, Holiday Gas Stations. Yeah. But you know, you, well, there's... They paid for her no, to go back to school and get her master's, no, and now she I know, works they're in mirroring, the office. They're mirroring Wawa because Wawa's conquered. They're up in New York, in New England, and they made it down the southern tip of Florida. That's pretty That's cool. That's conquering. And they're out, they're moving, and then we're going to move out west. And all they need is a change of that. And I'm not saying that, I'm not a, uh, it's jingoistic. That's what the word is, or xenophobic. They okay. think that where I'm from is better. Oh, yeah, So, no. but someone, they fall upon good uh, ideas and practices. And I always thought that when I started a small business, that even, let's say, you're working at the Lover's Boutique. Okay. Right? The adult uh, store that sells dildos, yes. but... Plugs, Bad plugs. Uh, pocket pussies, and all that <laughs> stuff. And and you want to get a good employee, right? You get a good employee, offer them profit sharing. Offer them, yeah. For the $15 yeah. that you're going to yeah, spend you go on like this, this dildo, you upsell the dildo. 35 cents is going to go back include, into your paycheck. And if you had set a, a box of, uh, a, of D batteries, you know, every time you sell a box of D batteries, you make 50. Uh, 50 cents more. 
You know what I mean? That's insane. I'm pretty good. Right? Yeah, you know what? I'll take another one. But I, I always thought that that part where people come in down here is the ownership. Like when you give, and I thought they always did that with, uh, um, when employees, when employers bring you into it and, uh, actually, you know, the person I work for, Kathy and Paige, uh, they treat you like a valued employee and stuff like that. And they do incentivize. Your, I really, they incentive, really they, like those. Ladies. They incentivize your thing. And they're very, very, uh, tough minded business people. Yeah. And you have to because chains are taken over down here and stuff like that. And if you have a chain, one of those chains that come in that had that forward thinking, it's for a business owner. That's terrifying. Unless you work on sales, if you do sales, when I say sales, like strict, strict sales, like real estate, real estate's easier to uh, give associate status and partnership status to. Think about it, right? Is it? I don't know. Yeah, My brother's yeah, a broker sales are owner. Can. Because you... Well, when you did it, you give a share into the whole brokerage. Well, see, but my brother's a broker owner, but I don't believe that any of his agents have a share of his business. I believe that they all had just hang their license there. No, you know? that's like a barber shop. And right. Like, I understand. But I don't it. know. I, I don't know you enough can, about it. You can do that because you're listing through them and stuff, and you could make them partners. Like they do use the law office model. Oh, right? yeah. That's so common. Yeah, the law office model. So if you wanted to be outside, the box thinker, you create the incentive and, and they do it. People get smart after a year or two. You tell them, you go, oh, if you work here this long, we're going to up your salary. Shannon, we're going to thank you for all that. You want to say hi? Say hello. Say hi. Hello. Oh, geez, did I, cut? <laughs> I am eventually going to work my way. Through. I'm going to kick the Are power out. Are you kicking out. the power out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kick this power. Shannon just came over to steal my beer, but then he decided not to have beer, and he had tea instead because he's going to yeah. go on a bike ride. He's trying to be healthy. He's being a good girl. So uh, you think that uh, the, <laughs> butt, the butt plug upgrade and the dildo upgrade may be the perfect right? incentive so for people? Here, like giving one, you sell like, you do the sales. I know the sales incentive. The sales incentive of more mercenary. Think about mercenary. When I say mercenary. No, Maria, I know what you mean. That's like, You're paid to do it a job. But when you get someone thinking about the long-term health, now a salesperson doesn't think about the long-term health of the company. They think about the long-term health of their, of their income. paycheck. Yes. But if you're an employee that has ownership and, and you get, a, let's say, partial, if you're in a profit big sharing. change in profit sharing in the company, right. you look out for company policies and how you would talk about it. So each person that works there, from the person that cleans the toilets, the stock the shelves, to the person that's managing and regional manager, when they talk about Wawa, they can say, it's a great company to work for. They care about us. They give us great benefits and stuff like that. And then when they think about it, when you're in your own store, you pick up, you take care, you go beyond your job. When you're in other places, you promote. You promote. So... There's a, a full, there's a model to be successful in the keys. And I thought about that all week. About if I, all those companies I thought about, you know, the baby furniture rental. Right. We joke about it, renting babies and stuff. Renting babies. But there was a model for it and I could have done it, but I didn't have the technical expertise to franchise it and stuff like that. And if I have, I have the ideas, but not the business acumen or to follow through. I followed through with this. I followed through all the way with this. Well, absolutely. I did. This but I yours. did not follow through. But I had, this, I had those ideas. It does not make me brilliant. It's just my strong belief that you get buy-in from people. That when they see that old adage from, I think it was Roosevelt, but it could have been someone before, like Coolidge or someone like that. And he said, and you may have heard, if you're a long-time listener show, a rising tide raises all ships. Ah, a rising yes. tide raises all ships. Isn't so when your company, it could be Roosevelt. I think it's Roosevelt, and that means if your company's successful, if the group you're with is successful, then you uh, you will be successful. And it it's uh, communitarian, not communist. Communitarian meaning that you're doing good for the group, like you would if you were in the military, if you were a police officer, if you're a member of uh, like a medical team, any type of team. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to talk about it in the next episode. Uh, I got something to talk about. I watched on television. This is Jim the Keys bartender. I'd like to thank Jenna Kelly. Uh, remember, folks, 
leave a review. We like to thank 43 Keys Media. You guys are doing a great job. I promise I'll do my end right here. <laughs> I will. I promise I will. We promise we yeah, will. We'll try to stay on. Uh, I think we stayed on point. We made it back full circle to the Keys employees and end the successful implementation of that. And I'm not trashing. I, if you notice, I didn't go through how people, what happens if you feel that you're invaluable and for no reason, you may not show up, you may not call in, you may do all these sorts of things, but sometimes people are over a barrel and stuff like that. But you don't need to be in a barrel. Get your people to buy in, but you got to get the right people to buy in. There's, there's college kids that come down here. There's high school kids that don't want to necessarily go to college and stuff like that. If you get them to buy in and they can see a long-term future and they can get a long-term future, but you're getting people that just work in and cycle through, you're going to get the same old people in here that yeah. live in sheds, that... You know, and I, it's a horrible lifestyle for people. The best the place for poor people to live is in big cities because there's more places to bunk down on. Down here, they're screwed during a hurricane they and really stuff like are. that. Yeah, and and it's bad for business. Yeah. Not that that. Well, you know what? You're going to be homeless. You got to be homeless wherever you're going to be. I, I'm not going to be that guy that goes and starts shooing them away. No. You know, no. we keep our local homeless. I'm surprised there's not like. 100,000 down here. But this is Jim the Keys bartender signing off. I'd like to thank Jenna Kelly. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try it again. Oh, let's bring the music up. I, I figured this out. I'm getting really... No, well, uh, you know the next time. <laughs> After a long day of being pulled in every direction, the last thing anyone wants to think about is what's for dinner. That's where Schwann's can help with a variety of real food choices, frozen to lock in freshness, from ready-made meals, premium meats and side dishes, to vegetables, ice cream, and more. Schwann's foods go from freezer to table in minutes, not hours, so you can pull off a delicious meal in no time at all. Ordered, delivered, done. That's homemade easy. To help simplify mealtime, visit schwanns.com. After a long day of being pulled in every direction, the last thing anyone wants to think about is what's for dinner. That's where Schwann's can help with a variety of real food choices, frozen to lock in freshness, from ready-made meals, premium meats and side dishes, to vegetables, ice cream, and more. Schwann